Oh, okay. See, today we are going to talk on what is called theoretical okay but before i go to this in last class where we described the concept of spectrum i have missed out one important point what is called as long crested or 2D spectrum. See what we did if you recall we said that we are standing somewhere we have an irregular record right. We said this is broken down to number of waves okay. The point is that what we have actually not stated what I wrote here was something like that. We said that eta t equal to sum of you know something like a i cos k i x minus omega i t plus beta i. Now look this expression what does it tell? Which direction is this regular wave moving? Well this tells me that waves are moving in x direction. What it means is that when I took a signal here I assume that it is composed of all the regular waves moving in the same direction. So what would happen if I stood if I stood here what would happen I will find this crest line you know right hand left hand side to be infinitely long which means that if I look at that I will find this wave like you know like fully long crested because there is no variation on this side. See if I were to in other words if I were to cut a cross section you know if I were to call this to be z x and y if I were to take a z x plane anywhere I would see the same picture. Now which means what we are talking is that what we have presumed is that this irregular record is two dimensional uh, exactly it is unidirectional. So you can call it see this one long crested this is the crest line crest line is the one that is going along y y axis it is infinitely long okay the entire wave is propagating in one direction so it is unidirectional as you said and in another way of looking at it is that the wave fluid motions are all contained in xz plane so therefore it is two dimensional so this spectrum is known as what we have what we know this we have come down to a spectrum this is what is called a 2D spectrum or the this description this way of describing C is known as long crested C which I should have mentioned yesterday. Remember one thing what we have done we have only got this record. See in analyzing it I went to a C I put my stick some measuring equipment I only found out this record how much is it at with respect to time rest is my analysis. Now if I presume that all the waves are coming from one direction x and broke it down then I make a spectrum then I call that a two dimensional spectrum long and or this C is known as long crested C. This is what we have done but as you know if you actually go on a C you would not find the crest line to be infinitely long both sides like if you stand on a ship the crest on your right hand side and left hand side is not uniformly long. That description would be obtained if I were to add waves not only of all lengths in one direction but coming from all directions also which we will discuss later on this is that is what is called short crested or 3D spectrum. So I just wanted to mention today as on now that what we talked is a 2D spectrum so far which presumed automatically that the crests are long. So we, we refer to them as either long crested C or a 2D spectrum all right. As I said we will come back to the 3D spectrum description afterwards. Now uh, we have mentioned yesterday that ultimately you end up getting a graph we call it wave spectrum. 
actually you can call some people use the word wave energy spectrum, but you know we actually by default do not use the word energy, you know we say wave spectrum, but it implies wave energy spectrum. So, we have said also that if you went around the oceans, if you collected data for ages which people have done, the shape of the spectrum turns out to be resembling a narrow band Rayleigh spectrum. Well, narrow band I did not mention, but it is narrow band means there is more, it is contained within that. Broad band would be actually what you mean by you know spread over long distance. Now the question comes, the second question, right. I have collected data for last 100 years at various location I know it is like this, but as I was concluding in last lecture, my aim is essentially predictive. I want to know how I would describe the sea for operation tomorrow. Let us say I have a transatlantic voyage, I would like to know or I have a offshore structure located in Gulf of Mexico or in North Sea. Obviously, I would like to know what kind of wave, wave it is going to encounter, not what it has encountered already because I have not designed it. Okay. So, therefore, I want a description. To this end, what has happened? No, sea state comes later, you see, uh, sea states will come much later. What happens? We actually have to come up with a shape by a formula. Now, this formula S omega, okay. If it is a narrow band spectrum, we know the shape of the formula in terms of its area under the spectrum or in terms of some characteristic height parameter or some height and period parameter. Okay. The question is that people have investigated this and number of formula have been proposed which fits the data in specific locations. For example, you are a collected data in say North Sea for maybe 100 years or if not 100 for a long time. Then you keep fitting and then you find out that yes, it fits a particular formula. Another place, another formula. Like that, number of such formulas have evolved. Those formulas are actually called theoretical wave spectrum. Okay. So, there will be form, this will be function of, it can be function of, well, essentially m0, but m0 can be written in terms of h one third and there can be a function of t, some t characteristic, it can be you know t p, t 0, I will come back to that, some characteristic time period. Never mind this for the time being. Let me just show some formula then you will realize what we are talking. See the very first formula that was proposed had looked like that, one of the very earliest one. It says alpha g square by omega phi because it has to look like that with exponential minus beta g by u omega 4 with alpha There was a formula proposed very beginning long back, I believe it might have been about 40 years back or so. Like that you see here alpha and beta are constant given by these numbers. Okay. The only unknown here of course is u here which is actually wind speed. Here the formula was given in terms of wind speed, omega is a variable. So, what it means is that if I want to find the formula how a omega versus s omega. All I have to do is to calculate for different omega, say 0 0.1, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, etc., for a given u. So, for a given u, you calculate that, you will end up getting a shape like that. Another u, you will get a, end up getting a shape like that. Obviously, it is dependent on only single parameter u here, which is wind speed. See, earlier formula evolved taking the shape to be a function or the size, si, well, shape and size to be function of 
wind speed because it was thought that you know larger the wind blows more energy will go in etc etc so, this is actually called the original form of pearson moscow spectrum Moscovitz is it however this wind speed was a parameter that was more used in aerospace people you know there is a so called Beaufort scale they, they see when we talk in practical engineering people like to put some kind of scale like very strong wing storm condition etc etc you know you 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 wind speed can be let's say 1 knot to say 100 knots or even more but then you kind of quantify if it is more than say 100 to 120 knot you say it is like a severe storm etc etc so there was a scale which the aer aeronautical people always use called beaufort scale you know and that was essentially based on wind speed but however so, original formula also had a functional dependence on wind speed, but subsequently we people who are in marine side or oceanography side started thinking why wind speed? It should be some measure of h one third or some measure of height and period, only height or not. See, this is a single parameter, give only one wind, you will get a shape. Where the shape is, that is not this, you know, if I give wind speed say 20 knot, it is here no matter what you do 30 knot is fixed but then modified formula started coming where people started saying that i will write the formula in some in terms of either h one third or h one third and some particular period t that is later formula are of the formula are of the form of something like h now normally you see here i will just first write h and t what does h tells me h tells me the area under that it can be h one third h average h rms h one tenth etc okay so i need that because that will give me the severity in a measure of severity now peop, as i said earlier people begin to use this what one third more or significant well one third is same as i can call it by default significant now with respect to t there are three or so t's there one t is the what we have said yesterday mean period in a spectrum the mean mean period that is t well you can call it by this we call it by t1 i believe yesterday right t1 mean actually we can put mean central period but you can also have a peak period this is where the peak value occurs so this would be they of course actually this is not well this is not t but this is the measure of t because this is actually omega so you uh, let me call this omega 1 and this one i will call it omega 2 or omega p or omega 0 because remember t is inverse of that 2 pi by omega p or t pi by omega so t 0 or some people call it t p is the peak period also you can have t2 which is the mean zero crossing period my point of saying here is that essentially i need a factor designating the area under the it which tells me how high the waves are in a, in some sense so this can be any of the h parameter and typically one use h one third with respect to where it is located this side you need to tell one part of typical period or frequency now in height there is no debate all formulas are using h significant h one third but period there have been formulas which uses either the mean central period or peak period or mean zero crossing period. But the beauty is that all these T's are related by a factor, constant factor. For example, we will see later on that T0 and T1 is given by some constant factor, etc. etc. Okay. We will see that later on that all these T's T1, 
T p or 0 T 2 all by okay <clears throat> now uh, there are formulas that evolved which uses h1 and t1 or h1 and tp in other words the same spectrum people have represented in different formulas so i am going to talk about two or three formulas which is most used here you see in in our uh, literature one is what first i will write in terms of this which is the oldest spectrum in fact two parameter older it, all this I, I, I let me first write it down most of the spectrums basically what happened became named after the person who have developed it you know see this is Beth, Brett Snyder this formula looks like that all of them will have the same look exponential and T 1 which is the mean central period related by this thing by and or this is one. In fact, this is this can be also called to be a modified form of P m spectrum. You will find out that the see P m spectrum in the original form was written in terms of u. So, here the u is replaced by what is known as two parameter spectrum that is h one third and t one. That means, you have to know given h one third two meter t one 10 second you will get a shape. If you get something else you get another shape etcetera etcetera. This is one. Now, I will tell you the, uh, the another one which is a modified uh, p m spectrum. This is also a extensive of modified p m. There are minor differences between various formula proposed. What has happened see uh, going back again little bit of history. Remember that if you go historically ships were much ships predate much more offshore structures. You know there were ships around in 19 much much earlier than option structure and there was a need for finding out ship motion. So, this formula aimed at actually application to ship and this formula is probably in 1940s or so subsequently maybe little later around that time 1950s or so Brett Snyder gave this spec formula somewhat similar to this in the shape and all however, it instead of u we want to use now h one third. Then came like our uh, uh, you know story in resistance ITTC and ISSC committees you know uh, there are two ISSC is uh, I, let me just tell you briefly is international ship structure congress and ITTC of course, you know towing tank conference. Now, waves <laughs> were important from loading point of view how much of shear force and load it gives uh, bending moment and load. So, ship structure congress were interested to actually freeze on a formula that uniformly can be used by ship people. The other thing is that remember ship is most ocean going ships are not geographically operating in certain area. You may have a ship taking sugar from Calcutta going to Singapore, unload take something go to Russia then etcetera etcetera. So, mostly the ships are covering all over the ocean. So, they wanted a formula that represent the wave condition on an average sense for the entire globe. That then they came up with a formula which is called ISSC formula which adopted by ITTC which is also called modified PM formula which is what I will write. The reason I am saying that is because by default when somebody does not give you any spectrum we use that mostly for our design purpose ITTC recommended spectrum just like we are using ITTC recommended formula for our CF in resistance calculation. So, that formula is uh, it, it looks well 
once again this same formula can be expressed various ways. So, I will write one way and then another way we will write separately. So, this is given as well this is I will let me write it down first oh no this this is written as in a different form because it is non dimensionalized you know this expression this is meter square second meter square second. And I am at the end of the class I am going to ask you to do some assignment or problem. See the formula looks same. If you look at this, you will find out if you look at this too, omega minus 5, omega minus 5, here comes omega minus 4, here T14 is same as T1 minus 4. So, these two are same, it is a constant that change. You know, if you look at that, there is a similarity of that. See, this is also T1 minus 4, this is also T1 minus 4 into omega minus 4, same as this two. What is different? This, this constant. Here, H1 third square comes here. So, if you look at that the formula is basically the same formula in a different way with slight modification may be there. T, so, T 1 of course, we said is basically mean central period that we know let me write it again. Let me also write it down this is 2 pi complete it. T 2, T 2 is the uh, as I mentioned before is the well now in this case no not well no I will write T m it is the mean period mean wave period another one we can actually write mean wave period just mean when you take all the waves and just average period basically not not central period which is given by 2 pi etcetera you know, like that and but this is same as this T 1 is 1.060 etcetera etcetera and T 0 or P is this is not important you know what 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 I want to only say in this one is that all the T's are connected it is given in terms of 1 T like T 1 if you do not want it, you can change it in terms of T p or something like that, it just the constants will change that is all. Okay. So, not a big deal, this is what is called, uh, we call it modified p m spectrum. So, this is the one that typically we use, this is the one that typically we tend to use for uh, ship this or even the previous one also you could use not a big deal if you plot them the changes are not much high, much different. I will get back to this in a minute, but there is one more spectrum that is well this is one very important we all should know. Let me put it this way, we are treating a subject of how the ship behaves in waves and so we are on the receiving end my owner tells us look my ship is going to operate from A to B. I ask him okay, what kind of wave conditions are there, either he gives me a wave condition or a spectrum by a formula, then I use that formula. If he does not give, he says no you choose yourself, then we will use this one. Okay. So, what I mean that this what do you use is really typically depends on the person who is asking you to do it. Because suppose he is doing a let us say a, a vessel which only goes between Calcutta, um, Vizac, Madras and Port Blair. So, we may be wanting to know a particular spectrum that fits the data mostly for Bay of Bengal only. Then I have to ask him give me the formula, if you cannot give me then if you say you choose I will use this ITTC recommended formula, you get the point. Now, so remember at this point I have only a formula, 
and I will only talk about how the shape looks like etc etc in a minute ok. So, this is a what is called a two parameter formula because I need to find out I need to give two input to plot this which is what I will ask you to do at the end of the class like plot these shapes for various combination of h one third and t. So, that you get an idea how the shape looks like ok. But be before I um, uh, do that there is one more that is most important that is what we call the second one it is called well second one means in this two second one I also had Brett Snyder and the other one John swap spectrum ok. Now, this is interesting you know this implies joint not C wave project. What has happened is that uh, when in not C you know not C uh, on the north east of Scotland maybe southwest of Norway etc. Finland that area th there is a huge oil reserve and at one time there was the largest number of oil you know platforms. Now when you have an oil platform sitting there it is not a ship going from A to B to C and all that what is the point of designing it for waves which is average you want to have a wave only at that, that is at of that location that is point one. Point two is that North Sea happens to be always more rough in an average sense, always North Sea. It's it's a well known fact. You know, uh, the waves are of a different characteristic. There are larger waves, etc. So these people took a uh, project, joint North Sea, a huge project, and at the end, after several years, they came up with this spectrum called Johns of spectrum, and it has become historically very important and that is why we are talking about it. It is uh, used very extensively for North Sea of course, you use it, but the form of that is used even for other geographically specific locations. So, it looks like that. In fact, it is a modification of PM spectrum. It will look like uh, again there are two ways of writing this. One way of writing was like that in terms of TP. Uh, peak period this is written in terms of peak period here this is P. Again you will see the form has to be always same that exponential some constant by a period power of 4 into omega power of minus 4. See if you look at that you will find out that this is actually similar thing you know TP omega minus 4 T p 4 if you actually multiply that it will become omega minus 1 which is T p. So, H 1 third into some T unit of that you will see that the unit of that meter square second because T power of 4 into omega minus 5 gives you what omega minus 1 which is equal to T p. So, like that and here also the same thing, but here the most important part is that they have a factor called gamma power of A which is called pickiness factor which is what I will know. So, gamma is given as 3.3 you know it is called picketness factor A is defined as exponential this is very any textbook will give you actually this one the same peak frequency something like that. So, this was what is a joint cell spectrum you know I wrote one way of the formula the same thing can be represented in, in the, instead of T p in terms of T 1 ok uh, uh, the other way I will also write that one.
alternative representation. So, here S omega will look like 155 h this is actually same thing the, the I have a point of saying this. Actually, y is same as a here, but it's just written with a different that's the same as this thing. this is just a relation. See why, why I mention, why I wrote that, see I, the, my main reason of writing that is like this. Same spectrum you can represent by different formula. You know if you put the numbers and write a computer program, you are going to get the same result. It is just that in one place you are putting T1, another place Tp. Okay. So, it is the same thing you can rewrite. Uh, my point of telling is that depending on which book you open, who has written it, you may find out the formula looks different, but actually they are all same thing. That is what my point is. So they do not look for a formula that looks in all across the book same. They represent the same graph, but they look different because somebody use another two parameters, somebody use one another this parameter etcetera. Okay. So, now the point is having said that now we look at uh, this uh, uh, you know shape here. Let me go back first the shape part of it one by one from uh, say modified PM spectrum, I will go back to this modified PM spectrum part again. Just keeping that in mind, how will it look like? You will find out and this is what you will be doing and I will tell you the actual numbers. If you use H one third, say for given Tp, you increase H one third, you will find out that the shape goes up. Okay. Of course, what you do is that, well here we have used H 1 and say certain T p. Now, we, we have to understand one thing, some, some T, let me take the peak period only. Can I have say a T p of some number say 6 second? And H one third, two, three, four, five, six, eight meter. In other words, can I have this uncorrelated with this? The answer is no, because see what does TP means? TP means the period, which means the wavelength. Now I cannot have very short wavelength with very high wave height because naturally height by length has got some relation. Well, I may not be exactly able to tell that my h by lambda is constant or something, but I can of course tell that I cannot have an arbitrarily high h for a given T p. So, in other words what I mean that for a given h, let us say for a given h r of 6 meter, my T p may be varying between say 8 to 10 seconds, but not 4 to 20 seconds. Okay, there is some slight variation that we will talk about that later on. Therefore, to plot this h, see here this plot this one is for T p equal to say 6 second, this for 8 second, this for 10 second, this for 12 second. Now, you could let us say as an example. Now, my point is that if I look other way around, supposing I took a graph where I want to see h one third is say 6 meter and T p is equal to 10 second, okay, which means I am going to get a shape like that. Now, if I another one with T p equal to say 12 second, what will I get? Tell me. You will be getting a shape which has the same area because my h one third is same. 
but my peak period is supposed to have got well this is my period increasing this is my omega right. So it is supposed to have got shifted so you will fi find that my shape would become something different slightly but it will look something like that maybe. So there is some variation with TP that you will find out if I do that but my point of course is that you cannot have for this TP arbitrarily small there is a range of TP but typically obviously H one third gives me the area TP gives me the peak period if I increase TP peak period will shift the location will shift. So you will end up getting this shape but now the important point let us say for the same combination this if I were to put John Swap spectrum you know what you will find you will find that the John Swap spectrum looks something like this. What does the spectrum tell me? Remember if I give a formula for a given spectrum say I say H one third so and so TP so and so I got a shape what I find out I, I find out that there are practically no waves below this length there are practically no waves above this length, below this length above this length or rather I know I also know where the maximum energy is. What is the difference between these two shape? Main thing is that in John Swap you find that you end up getting much more number of waves of one frequency whereas this is more spread see let me uh, give an example of what is called as white noise you know suppose a spectrum is like this some frequency versus some energy okay some, en some energy what does it mean it is actually called white noise which means all the frequency components exists equal amount actually if you see our white light you know all the seven frequencies are of same amount that is why it is called white noise also you can call it sometime. This is a very broadband spectrum means all frequency exist. Now when I have this it is a narrow band spectrum but this is even more narrow this is even more narrow and if you actually have only one frequency it will be a straight line. So this what it means is that therefore relatively speaking John's spectrum tells me that it is far more narrow banded and there are much more waves for a given in, in a record which is of one type only. In other words if I were to see in a spectrum form it may look more like there is a dominant one form whereas other one will look much more spread. You know like if you break it down you will find more or less more wide distribution of all the frequencies equally whereas if you break it down you will find much more number of wave of this frequency. Now you see why it is important suppose I have an offshore structure which happens to behave badly in this frequency then you have it. So you see the characteristics are different it is very important to understand when you have a spread spectrum which is an average sense which means that I have actually almost all kind of frequencies more equally dis evenly distributed but this one is much more what is called picky that is why this term was called picketness factor you know. This is a typical characteristic that happens in North Sea that means if in a ge geographical location if a wind blows at certain speed some certain energy goes inside it tends to excite some wavelength only most not all. And from design point of view you know if I have to for example represent this spectrum by one unique frequency then I will obviously take the peak one. Well I can say that if this body does not behave badly in this peak frequency maybe it is quite okay. But in a C case of course it is a, you know in the, in the PM's case it is more wide band okay. So this is what one thing that I want to tell now comes the question how do I use it okay. Uh, before I go to your assignment uh, problem let me uh, talk about how do I use this kind of information what H one third I should use what TP I should use okay this is okay if I tell you that use H one third 6 meter TP 10 second I know what is the spectrum that is one side that is I have already told you that use this parameter so you know this spectrum but there is another dilemma that we will have that is I am having to design a ship. Now I like to know what spectrum I should use. Uh, maybe before that I will tell you one more characteristic. Now you see we have got this H one third TP characterizing the sh shape. Now again H one third you put say 3.95 meter TP 11.2 second I get a shape then tomorrow you use H one third equal to 
4.17 TP is something you get a shape. H1 that is a continuous number, but people do not like to talk the condition in this continuous number. So, people use some kind of scaling, you know, like we use the word rough, very rough in your grade also we say, you know, poor average, etcetera, all bulk, no, in like in your grade 70 to 80 B or is it C, I do not know, B, okay, 80 to 90 A, like that. So, here also people want to say, look, we are going to talk in terms of qualitative sums. So, we people introduce the word C state. So, you have then a kind of a description, C state 1, for example, you would say by a description, C state 1 is very calm water, etcetera, etcetera, and then you say, see if I call C state, um, you know, like 1, 2, 3, 4, etcetera, say 0, 1, 2, then I will relate that to an H1 significant or, or H1 third between some values. For example, in according to 1, this is not very uniform thing, you know, this say C, C state, uh, you know, like the, there will be some kind of number. Well, this is, there are some charts there. What would happen is that we have an oceanographic data. It says in one hand description, then H one third limit, say for example, describe, you know, very calm water, no white, you know, like uh, white cap formation, which means you do not find this white, white uh, breaking breakers, etcetera, etcetera. H one third is between this to this range. T p is between these two this range and we call it C state to be 1 or 2 or 3 whatever. So, what is what I am saying that in order to describe people use some kind of scale C state. Say C state 4 would mean perhaps that wave height is between say 2 to 3 meter significant wave height, period is between 10 to 11 second etcetera etcetera. There is a chart there that is not fully frozen that there are WMO world meteorological organization they, they also give a chart we can use that. So, what happened to our design is something like that, say a naval ship design you are doing. So, the let us say uh, the one that we are building say you know like the aircraft carrier. So, there is a requirement show that your design is good such that my roll do not exceed 10 degrees more than 5 percent time in C state 3. What would you do? You will actually go to C state 3 take that as an input spectrum, you, know, you go to the chart, find out for C set 3, what is the average H and T, use that, put that back in the formula. Then I have got the spectrum for C set 3, then I of course, use my shape for the C set 3. So, there is one side a deterministic requirement, people will say that okay, make sure that your ship can operate up to C state 4 and there is a, let us say there is a requirement of operation, you can operate provided some parameter, some acceleration do not exceed 0.2 g at some place, let us say. So, like that one can st state that is an owner telling, but sometime we need a long term statistics to know the percentile. What has happened by long term statistics is that people have collected this data all over the world and for each location there is the number of time H significant occurred and T p occurred, this is a big chart has been found out. For example, say 0 etcetera, etcetera. What it means is that this H is this T p combination occurs so many times. You see here, if I were to put some number 0, 0, etcetera, somewhere see here, let us say 14 po meter, like that go, go to 0.5 meter. Somewhere here this occurs and this T p's are maybe 3, 4, 5 like that to 14 second. So, you write this number, say here 2011, actually I cannot show this here. What I mean is that there are long term statistics available of T p and H 1 third combination. What it means that so many times a wave has been observed in pre past which has this H 1 third this T p. Okay. See suppose I have collected data for 100 years in some location. Now, I find out here that out well I have collected data and I analyze 1 million data of which I find out that 5 data occurred where H 1 third is 14 meter T p is 10 second. 2000 occurred when H p is so and so, T p is so and so. Basically, this is a joint probability, how many times the occurrence are. Earlier what happened in a signal, I have only broken down to 1, how many times H 1 third occurred or H s occurred. Now, we are doing a joint probability, how many times H s and T p of this combination occurred. Okay. So, this is what is called joint probability. So, from the joint probability, you can find out 
Therefore, what is the chance that my h one third will occur more than certain value and tp more than certain value. So, by that you can statistically combine and figure out how many times my h s and tp combination occur. So, let us say h s tp combination occurs certain certain you know like say 2 into say what, whatever see certain h s tp let me say this combination this probability you know probability of occurrence of this. So, what you will do of course, do is that I will try to now determine how much is the role in this combination, but I know that this occurs only 5 percent time. So, therefore, I will take 0 0.0 you know 5 percent into that number. Then another h s t p occurs 20 percent time, I find the response I multiply with that. Like that I can find out what is the probability of that response. It is simple addition, I mean I am not going to go through this in detail, but I what I want to tell you it is a simple addition. Why simple addition? Because you see if given h one third given t p I know the spectrum, but now I am telling another graph where I, I can tell how many times this h one third t p occurs. What is the chance of this h one third t p occurring? So, I can take all the combination and therefore find out what is the probability of the final response it is just by adding. See supposing in this graph says this is what I will you will find out that the numbers are more here. You have no record where h is 14 meter has occurred with a tp of 5 second no record at all which means 14 meter significant wave height do not occur with a peak period of 3 second not one, but maybe only two times it occurs with 6 second like that you get the joint probability distribution. And what I am therefore meaning is that joint probability will tell me what is the chance of this h s t p occurring and now I will take all those find out for all of them response multiply with the probability function I, I get, then end up getting what is the probability of that particular response. Okay. So, it is very simple uh, uh, let me uh, let me put it the other way around just for simplification. Let us take just two example let us say that I have a record which says 20 percent time my h s occurs 3 meter with t p equal to say 10 second and rest 80 percent of time my h s occur 2 meter t p equal to 8 second. Just take an example okay. actually it will be much more longer, but let us take an example that let us see that in a particular location I found out only 20 percent of time my h s is 3 meter with t p 10 second and the rest 80 percent time 2 meter 8 second. Now, I find out for that uh, the response. I find that my theta rho becomes 12 degree and I find that the hair rho becomes 15 degree. So, I can always take the and then I can find the probability of that also then 0 0.8 times this plus 0 0.2 times this to get my average. sign of average in a sense. In fact, it will be not so straightforward you have to find the probability of this also. So, I have probability of this occurring at 20 percent time or rather let me put the other way down the, the chances of theta exceeding 10 degree I want to find out. I find out that in this C it is 70 percent time in this it is 10 percent time, but this 70 percent is occurring 80 percent of time. So, I have got total chances 0 0.7 into 0 0.8 plus 0 0.1 into 0 0.2 you understand. So, therefore, what is my chance of theta exceeding 10 degree will become 0 0.7 70 percent of time but that phenomena is occurring 80 percent of time. So, 0 0.7 into 0 0.8 plus 10 percent of time for a phenomena occurring 20 percent time. So, 0 0.10 uh, you know 1 into 0 0.2. So, therefore, when you add you end up getting the so called total probability. See uh, okay. see theta is occurring more than 10 percent time uh, in this C 2 meter 8 second C okay. and it is occurring more than 10, 10 degree for 10 percent of time in 3 meter 10, 10 second wave. Now, it is occurring 70 percent of time in this wave, but this wave is occurring of the total only 80 percent of the time. So, I have this into that. No, no. So, this is what the requirement no the requirement will be in the design ultimately that you see what would happen is like that design will tell me in a probability strength it will tell uh, you that please tell us that your theta does not exceed 10 degree for at least 95 percent of time. The, absolutely. So, therefore, what happened here you will find out there is a 
I have to find out what is my probability of theta exceeding theta given. Okay, let us say. So, I will find out this now by combining the probability. This is what is my requirement. Now, if I find out that this is null, then I will say my ship cannot operate in this condition. Essentially, you are trying to find out operability. Let us say, uh, let me say the other way around. Let us say that if the heave is very high, okay, more than 3 meter, then you cannot dig oil. Now, I want to find out how much of time it is going to be more than 3 meter. My requirement is that look, in a design you must make sure that 98 percent time you or 90 percent time you must have h le, uh, heave less than 3 meter because otherwise I cannot dig oil. Now, I find out that in a design it was 95 percent time. So, I is acceptable. So, I only 5 percent down time so called, but if it was 80 percent time then you might want to change the design. Uh, no, no, it is in the design stage let me not after designing when you are evolving the design, this is how you can use the data. See when we use also a offshore structure or something, let us say I, let us take an offshore structure, there is the offshore structure there you know you have and waves are coming, you want to find out how would you design, what is the stress you will take, you must take some kind of wave. So, here we have deterministic in some sense, we can take okay, I am going to take the highest wave that occurs once in 100 years. I will take that wave and I will see whether the ship survives, uh, the body survives, that is one way of looking at it. Otherwise I will say, I will find out what is the chance of my structure failure uh, is H one third occurring more than so much percent in time and therefore my stress more than so much percent time. So therefore I will find out what is the, by combining what is the chance of my stress occurring at a certain location more than so much percent time. As long as it is very small, I will accept the design. These are the kind of uses. Okay. Anyhow, I will um, I like to drop that and I will to tell you this assignment. See now what I want to do is that this two spectrum, this ITTC spectrum and this John swap, both of them H s 2, 4, 6, 8 meter and T p for 2 meter we will take 6. Okay, let me take this way only. Yeah, okay. This is 7, maybe, or rather 8, maybe, this is maybe 10. Okay. This combination that is 2, 6, 4, 8, 6, 10, 8, 12. I want you to calculate the spectrum and plot the spectrum. Okay. Then for one case, this is 1, one case for H s equal to 4, <coughs> T p you will take 9, 10, 11 to plot. There are many reasons for doing that, you know, only when you do this plot, then you will understand that what is the kind of waves, what is the omega range, because otherwise what would happen, you will begin this formula, you do not have the time, you will begin this formula, you will find out that omega is minus 4. If you take omega 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you will find out that you have got 1 point, 1 point here, 1 point here, then all 0, 0 points by only doing you will know within what it re remains. Then you will have an understanding that actual ocean waves lie between what range of omega, therefore what range of length, therefore what is a peak. You will find out interestingly that no waves occur normally below 50 meter, normally about 600 or so meters, mostly it is about 100, 200 meter. This you can only do if you actually uh, play the number, because omega if you put 0 it is infinite lambda. Omega if you put 0 0.01 it is something like maybe 1 meter wavelength or, or whatever I, I do not know. Not, not, or if you put omega to 1, 2 pi by omega is 2 pi uh, is t is you will find out. So, only when you play with the number you will understand what you need to otherwise you will get 1 point here, 1 point here, 1 point here and all points which is of no meaning. Next run you will narrow it down you get 2 more points. You have to know that how I should do that so that I can get all the points here and nothing beyond that and that will give you an idea regarding which range of ocean waves or uh, which range of length the ocean waves really lie and if you do not do that you have no practical feel you know that is very important that you must do it this combination running a program is one second time 
what is important is to find out what range I will do. If you just write do omega is 1 to infinity, 1 to 10,000, you will just be completely wrong. So that you will do by narrowing down. With that I will end it. So you do that as an assignment. Okay. So our next class we will go now. It is time for us to put ship in the waves. Now we know how to describe waves. We have to now put the ship in the waves. Okay, with that I will end. Thank mm -hmm. you.